Well, everyone, it's time for us to go ahead and take a little bit of a notice of what the you know, few differences are between One UI 5, Android 13, and iOS 16. Now, this shouldn't be that long of a video, hopefully, because to be honest, there's a lot of overlap and a lot of similarities between all of these devices. Now, these are the latest and greatest phones from these manufacturers, and these are pretty much the kind of like when you expect to download One UI 5 or iOS 16 or the, or the Pixel, you know, Android 13. These are the devices you should be installing them on. Now, one thing I will tell you about One UI 5, and one thing I'm a big fan of, is that there seems to be more done with One UI 5 here than what stock Android did with Android 13 from the jump to Android, from Android 12 to Android 13, there's not as big of a jump from One UI 4 to One UI 5. I think there's a lot more changes with One UI 5 than on Android 13. Now, with iOS 16, there seems to be a lot of similarity between One UI 5 and iOS 16, more so than Android 13 and iOS 16. Now, to give you some perspective, the very first thing, which is really cool, is actually the ability of customizing our lock screen. So on One UI 5 and on iOS 16, we have the capability of customizing our lock screen by long pressing on this panel. Now, if I go ahead and shut my iPhone 14 Pro off here, if I go and tap the display, come on. If I go ahead and hold down the display, you can see I get into a very similar panel where I can go ahead and customize that lock screen. On the stock Android side, we don't really have that capability. I can hold it down here and there's nothing that comes up. Now, there is a little like customizing panel on the lock screen on here. If you go into your specific panel here, you might see a little lock screen panel wherever it is. Unfortunately, it's not as thorough as these ones. Like it's not like full on customizing. It's just like a few little things here. Like here you can just kind of change some added text or whatever. Otherwise, it's not as big of a difference as it is on One UI 5 and on iOS 16. Now, I will say with iOS 16s, you do have the ability of adding widgets and doing some cool things. You could kind of say that this stuff down here are kind of widgets like these specific app icons. There's a lot of overlap though with iOS 16 and One UI 5, which I'm really, really happy about. So this is a really big thing and I'm actually, I mean, you can change the size of these specific, like you can change the clock. I mean, there's so many things you can do on One UI 5, which I'm really happy about. Now on iOS 16, it is kind of like the same exact thing as One UI 5, at least for their customizing home panels. I will say from what I've seen, iOS 16 kind of does it really good. Unfortunately, you do have to like add a new like home screen wallpaper every single time, which I'm not a fan of. And this is one of the biggest changes with iOS 16, I will say. We all kind of know that on the back end, like of course, you you know, iPhone apps and Android apps and differences there, the Apple ecosystem, iMessage, like things like that are obvious. But when it comes down to these raw changes, and this is a massive change that Apple ended up bringing. And although I really don't even use different, too many different wallpapers, this is not even the phone that I use every day. I'm at least kind of glad that they did end up bringing this type of feature in. Now, again, with Android 13, they did not add that type of feature here, which is very strange. I feel like they probably should have. Under lock screen, though, under your settings panel, you do have a few different things. You have this like now playing option, which is kind of cool. You have always show time and info, tap to check phone. Lift to check phone, you have a couple cool things. I mean, but again, it's not anything crazy. And again, I feel like Google for stock Android could have done a little bit of a better job. So when it comes down to the raw features, that's a really cool thing. In terms of the stability aspect and the smoothness act, uh, you know, aspect between them, the 90 hertz panel on the Pixel 7 runs stock Android very, very well. I will say it doesn't seem as like weird. And in Android 13, I feel like things are very smooth still. With iOS 16, it's more or less the same. I don't think the, you know, multiple lock screen that you set up or anything like that slows your phone down a lot. It may affect battery life, but still the 120 hertz panel and everything, it runs very, very smoothly. And at least from like a, a stability aspect, iOS 16 has been getting better. It's still not perfect, but it has been getting better. With One UI 5, one of the things that Samsung has kind of mentioned was that they have went through and kind of changed up their specific, you know, gestures to make things seem a little bit smoother. Now, I don't know if that's the case. Like, it's still a very smooth operating system, and maybe things are a little bit smoother than with One UI 4. But I will say, one of my big complaints is still hopping out of an application. Whenever I'm in an application and I hop out, it still kind of seems like it's a little bit of a glitchy experience. Even opening it up right there was a little glitch. Hopping out, that always gives me a weird experience. With iPhones, that's never been the case. It's just such a smooth experience hopping in and out of applications, which is so beautiful. And like I said, One UI 5, one of the things they mentioned was actually the smoothness and kind of smoothening out the gestures. Android 13, more or less the same thing, like hopping in and out of applications seems pretty smooth, but even here it seems a little glitchy, like maybe it's just like an Android thing, but with a lot of Android phones I've owned, 
usually like with my Pixel 6 Pro, I remember that phone being very smooth. With these ones, I don't know. Maybe it will take a little bit of time with Android 13 getting a little bit better. But One UI 5, I think, does a better job than stock Android. I think iOS 16 does the best when it comes down to the smoothness of the whole entire UI. But I do think One UI 5 does a better job than the Pixel, at least with you know stock Android. Now, one of the biggest complaints I have with One UI 5, and one reason why I'm not the biggest fan of One UI in general, is not because of the software or the features or anything like that. It's because of the software update panel. So when my Galaxy S22 got this update, right, I was very happy about it because it took forever for this phone to get this update. And this is the latest and greatest from Samsung. For this type of phone, you know, my Galaxy S22, for having to have waited a longer period of time than usual to install this update, I'm not a fan of that. The other big problem I have with One UI is actually with the release cycle of all their other devices. I have a Galaxy S21, a Galaxy S20, and so many different variants of those phones as well, like the Pluses, the Ultras, and I am still not able to get any of the One UI 5 updates, even though on so many different panels it's been stated that it's been supported right now, even from the carriers that I bought those phones, it should be available, and it is still not available. With Samsung, and that is the biggest complaint I have. Now, they have said they're starting to fix it a little bit, but that is a big problem. They need to fix that when they should just make it so when one phone gets the update, all the other phones get the update too. And that is the reason why I love these two phones. With my iPhones, if a phone is supported with iOS 16, all of the phones get the same day updates. So all we have to do is go into settings here, we go into general, we click software update, and whether it's my iPhone 14 Pro that I have here, or if it's my iPhone 8, which came out many, many years ago, back in 2017, that is still supported, I can just go ahead and go into this panel, update my phone, and that is it. All of the phones will get this update the same exact time. Compare that to Samsung, the Galaxy S20 gets it on a different day, the S21 gets it on a different day, the S22 gets it on a different day. What is the point of that? There's absolutely no point in that. Just go ahead and make them supported the whole entire time. Personally, that is one reason why I complain the most about One UI, is because the updates are not streamlined like that, which is a very, very big complaint on my side. At least with iPhones, it's not the case. And with Android 13, that is another big thing that I love here too. If a phone is supported with Android 13, the same day you get an update is the same day the other ones get an update as well. If we make our way over basically to our settings panel here, we can scroll down into system update. We can just go ahead and scroll down into system update right here. So system and system update. And all we have to do is just go to this panel. And then, again, if your phone is supported with this software, that is all you're going to have to do is just update your phone. And that is pretty much it. If your phone is a Pixel 4 or newer, you are supported with Android 13. And again, that is why it's so beautiful. The same day the Pixel 7 and 7 Pro gets an update is the same day for the most part that the other phones get an update as well. Now, there's some caveats sometimes. Apple may make a specific update for the iPhone 14s. Maybe Google will make an update specifically for the Pixel 7s. But for those major updates like you know Android 13, November update, or you know iOS 16.3, all the same day updates, which is beautiful. So when it comes down to it, I think... One UI 5 surprised me the most. I think it brought a lot of cool things to the table, which is really cool. But I do think if Samsung can just fix that one little area where they just keep supporting these, like they just keep dropping updates for these phones at different times. I hate that so much. At least with these two ones, that is not an issue. But I do think Android 13 didn't make as big of a splash this year than One UI 5. And I do think iOS 16 kind of did the best in terms of the overall I would say experience, but I think One UI 5 probably brought more features when it comes down to at least the bigger things like smoothing out the gestures and the customization on the lock screen here. But it seems like iOS 16 just kind of cleaned out the lock screen for the most part and added that capability. So I'd love to hear your thoughts about it. Let me know in the comment section below. Hit the like button, that would be so much, but definitely hit that subscribe button. More importantly than everything else, I love every single one of you guys. Hopefully I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace out till then.